Hi there. You are listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Alana Terry here with Jamie Hampton. How's it going, Jamie? It's going well. This is our first like non-COVID conversation. I know. (laughs) I'm so glad that we did the COVID conversations. And now I'm so glad that we're kind of back to talking more specifically about the prayer side of things. Doing the COVID conversations was such a nice way, though, to stay and feel connected. So I loved that we did that. And now I'm just as excited to be back and to talking about prayer. Yeah, me too. I think it's, I think it, the timing just kind of made itself clear. So, and, and we yeah. had a pleasant surprise that we had several episodes written up and outlined that right. we didn't get to before the COVID conversation. So we're just yeah. ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I don't know that we ever mentioned it. I know in one episode, we're like, we must be coming close to our hundredth episode. And now we're like, we're way past that if you count the COVIDs, but congratulations. Are, yeah. Congratulations on one hundredth. Yeah. So I think it was an interview episode that ended up being our big one mm-hmm. hundredth. but mm-hmm. technically I think this is our 100th if you don't include the interviews that were in between. <laughs> right, right. So congratulations. I'm so glad we're doing this together. What are we on now? Like year four or so of doing this? I think so. I know. I was trying to figure that out because it just kind of runs together because we've, I mean, yeah. this is year, this is the second year of Praying Christian Women. Is that right? Yes. And mm-hmm. then we had two, a couple of years before yeah. that of the Prevailing Prayer podcast. Yeah. No, it's been such a fun thing. Like every single time we jump on here, I'm just so thankful that we get to do this. Yeah, me too. It's really, it's really a lot of fun and it's a fun way to keep in touch and keep us keeping mm-hmm. in touch. Cause I'm just personally For sure. not great at, I don't know. I was just thinking about this. I, there are certain people that have the gift of friendship, I think, and where they hmm, are interesting. Um, I have, there've been certain <laughs> people in my life that they'll constantly check in on me even if it's been a long time and Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. they're the the kinds of people that I don't know always remember anniversaries and birthdays right right. and I am I've got tunnel vision I've got whatever's Mm -hmm. in front of me that I focus Mm -hmm. on and if I don't have a reason to be in touch with someone I just it will slide and it's not because people aren't important to me no I totally get it yeah and I mean you know our family we've gone through multiple moves in the last few years and and for many good friends it just turns into okay we we can't get together and it's not a bad thing it just is what happens and I'm sure that would have happened to us if it hadn't been for first you asked for some help with your book and then that kind of got turned into us podcasting together so I'm actually really really thankful yeah, that me side too. Of things too, because otherwise it really would have been like, oh yeah, back when we lived in Anchorage, we had fun with the Hamptons, and like that would kind right. of be the end. <laughs> yeah, I definitely, I, I definitely appreciate that we have a reason to keep in touch because it really has, it's been a great, great blessing. It really, really has. Do you have anything to drink with you right now? Do you have a cup of coffee? Okay. I have a cup that you gave me. I recognize that cup. All right. I'm raising my cup. We are going to virtually cheer. Jamie, I'm so thankful for your friendship. Thankful for, I was going to say a hundred years of podcasting. (laughs) A hundred episodes of praying Christian women. The Lord and, has blessed us with longevity. <laughs> that's right. More than anything, I am so thankful for your friendship. I was thinking about this last night. I'm going to turn like totally sappy and cheesy, but oh. you truly have become like my best friend and I am so thankful for you. And I probably never like said that specifically, but I thank God for you. I thank God for our friendship. I love you so much and happy, happy hundredth episode. Here is my cup. I'm going to tap my, uh, All right. Here we I'm go. tapping tap. my camera. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Aww. I feel the same way. And I just, yeah, I, I couldn't be more happy and, and thankful for you and yeah. just this amazed, nice. honestly, because I know mm-hmm. going into working together in this way, we were kind of like, you know, it's hard to work together and, and yeah. like deciding to be roommates or something. You think, oh, wow, this is exactly. going to test our friendship. And it has been a huge blessing and and it has grown our friendship in a way that it's never you know so yeah I'm so thankful for you and I love you I love you thank you um speaking of roommates our kids and and I've had this thought too so we live in a duplex and our like next door neighbors or you know slash half tenants or whatever you would call them moved out about a month ago 
and my kids mentioned like about once a week, wouldn't it be cool if the Hamptons moved in? <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, that would be cool. It's a, it'd be a little bit of a commute for your husband. <laughs> it would, although he does, yeah, he, ha- he has one job that's close-ish to where you guys are. But, oh, okay. But yeah, but that's- How fun would that be? That would pipe be Pipe dreams, fun. pipe dreams. Maybe like when, when we're old and grandmas and we'll, we'll be roommates in a little like fancy retirement community. Like not like the sad, like, oh, that's too bad kind, but like the kind where we get to do like water skiing for seniors and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> when we are actually celebrating our hundredth episode, our hundredth year of podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Well, for those of you who maybe um, just are tuning in now or kind of found us while we were doing more of the COVID conversations, we're going back to what was more of our original format, which is topics on prayer. And we get to finally, like two and a half months later, <laughs> go to part two of good prayer habits. So I guess part one was episode 99, right? Uh, I think so. Does I'm that gonna sound have, about right. Yeah, it sounds we about stopped, right. Yeah, the numbering got funny with all of the COVID conversations, which we didn't count as full episodes. Blah blah blah. But anyway, yeah, it was episode ninety nine. Yeah, okay. creating good prayer habits. We yeah. are continuing our conversation about good prayer habits, and you're gonna have to bear with Jamie and me because it's been so long since we've done this format. I know, um, and I I thought to myself I should probably listen to part one. Oh, uh-huh. we're going into part mm-hmm. two to remind ourselves, but I know we just kind of, I'm pretty sure that in part one we gave, cause we're talking specifically about this book, Atomic Thoughts, or I'm sorry, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And how that can apply to our prayer lives. And you kind of just led that first episode, you know, talking mm-hmm, about that. Mm-hmm. And I was blown away. So I went and read the book and it it's was a good book, yeah. so applicable to our prayer lives. So we're very excited. Sure. I think you just laid the framework though. So maybe you could just kind of yeah. refresh what, what the, the basics of these. Yeah, I will are. definitely do that. First, should we, just so that we kind of get um, in the habit ourselves. Oh, that's right. When it, you want to start with a uh, word of prayer and the verse of the day and that kind of thing? That's right, because we don't just jump into conversation in we these episodes. We don't just jump we in anymore. I mean, format. we are professional <laughs> podcasting women. <laughs> Let's see. Instead of PCW for praying Christian women, it's just PPW, professional podcasting Pro- women. Professional podcasting. How about PPP? We're the professional podcasting prayers. I no. don't know. That's too many. P, 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 P. It sounds like kids playing Star Wars, like, pee, 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 pew, pew. Yeah, it does. It actually All righty. Okay. Well, so, yes, let's, let's, pray. let's pray. <laughs> All right. Hold on. I don't even know where my button is anymore <laughs> to stop my video. All right. God, we just come before you today. Um, grateful for 100 episodes of the Praying Christian Women podcast, grateful and thankful for our friendship, so thankful for each person listening, um, those that have faithfully supported us through all of our podcasting endeavors, and those that are just listening now. Lord, we know that you have brought them here for a purpose. We thank you for um, just this opportunity to look at kind of a secular idea of creating habits and being able to apply it to our prayer lives in a powerful way. We just pray you'd open our minds, open our hearts, allow us to um, just really see where we can apply some of these truths into our lives to grow in our prayer lives and deepen our relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And our verse of the day is uh, Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Um, I just think talking about some of these goals and habits, you know, there's a an element of doing, you know, like there's an element of, okay, I'm going to work my way toward good prayer habits, but as we do that, I think we always need to keep in mind that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. We need to keep mm-hmm. God as the foundation. Mm-hmm. This other stuff is good. These, these secular ideas and these practical disciplines and things, they work hand in hand with our faith and with, mm-hmm. but, but without God, it's empty and it's just 
it's just habits for the sake of, of pursuing goals to make us feel better. We need right, to always right. keep in mind the goal of, of loving God and, and deepening our prayer lives for the relationship, not just for the, the act of doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Not the check it off your to-do list. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right. So here's a fun, just for fun for, uh, habits. What is a bad habit and a good habit that you've developed during the pandemic? A bad habit is I have been staying up later and sleeping later. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, A good habit is that I have been reading my Bible more. That's great. Yeah. How about Mm -hmm. you? Bad habit would probably, two of them. I worked really hard to get out of checking emails in bed. Like basically the bed became a cell phone, cell phone free zone. Mm -hmm. And that kind of, I crept back in and then all of a sudden I was like spending 30 minutes a night, you know, lying in bed and looking at my phone. I don't like doing that. So that was probably a bad habit that crept back in that and just, um, like late night snacking when I'm not really hungry, just, Mm. you know, stress eating. I know we're all stress eating, but, um, I think for me it turned into like, okay, a week or two of stress eating, totally fine. A habit of stress eating, not going to be okay. (laughs) Um, so those would be the bad habits, good habits. I would say making walking more deliberate, like, and, and just outdoor time more deliberate, whether that's in the backyard, in the hammock. Do you know what bocce ball is? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, a bocce I don't know ball. the rules, but yeah, it's-, it's super fun. It's like a backyard lawn game. It's sort of yeah. a mix between like bowling and golf. Like you like roll really it like a, heavy balls, right? Yeah. You roll it like a bowling ball. Mm-hmm. They're not quite as big or heavy, but yeah, they're, they're not like, you know, tennis balls. Um, and you're trying to get as close as you can to like the, the little ball. So it's like, it's, it's part golf, part bowling, part croquet and part pool. Like it's really, really fun. And so I would say that's been a good habit, just deliberate outdoor time, especially now when Alaska is so beautiful this time of year. Oh, I know. I keep going back to what if this had happened in January, you know, It'd be or so much harder. November and, and we yeah. had months of darkness and cold. Months that- of being inside and like dusty homes and yeah, not yeah, good. <laughs> it would not have been the same as it is like yeah. now. We can, we can handle this. <laughs> yeah. Well, and scarier too. Cause I know like when things first started, people were panic buying cause we didn't know what was going to happen. And it'd be a lot scarier in the winter. Like, are we going to run out of heating fuel? Are we going to, you know, just all of the potential bad things that could happen. And thank God it never got crazy bad here in Alaska. Mm-hmm. And, you know, hopefully it's going to continue to improve here and across the globe. But yeah, I'm so thankful that we're in spring for this. Mm-hmm. All righty. So yeah. atomic habits, I'll do a super quick recap okay. of what we talked about before. So this is Atomic Habits by James Clear, which is not a book on prayer. It's a book on dun, 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 habits, but lots of things that we can apply to our prayer life. So in our last episode, we talked about these four components of a good habit. So you want to make it obvious, attractive, easy, and satisfying. And so for example, I have been trying to get into doing more regular stretching and exercise. And one thing I realized, like the one that I love the most is just make it obvious and easy Mm -hmm. because I've got one yoga mat and we've got two floors. And sometimes I do my stretches downstairs and sometimes I do them upstairs. And it seems like it would be a total waste of money to get myself another $15 yoga mat so I could have one on both floors. But I know that I would probably be exercising almost twice as much if it weren't for this barrier of, oh, I want to do some stretches, but I'd have to go upstairs to get my mat, you know? And so something for prayer, we talked about like, have your Bible and your prayer journal and whatever you want to have, like have it right there. So you're not going to have to be like, oh, well, I would read my Bible right now, but I don't know where it is or things like that. Um, And then making it satisfying and attractive. So these would be things like if you love that first cup of coffee in the morning with your fuzzy slippers and your blanket, have those things kind of there ready to go. Make it, make it cozy, make it feel good. Have there be some kind of 
I don't know if indulgence is the right word, but I don't think it's the wrong word either. You know, like if you love, <clears throat> I know in the winter, like you've got your little stove place and your rocking chair and your nice view out the window, like you've got it all right there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just, it's a cozy feel. It feels good. And so I think that ways that we can make our prayer routine or prayer habits just have that sense of whatever it is whether that's a sense of coziness or maybe for you it's relaxation or you know whatever it is it's it's good to couple those things with your prayer time so that you can kind of have those positive associations yeah and i mean i don't yeah i don't think there's anything wrong with that uh, making it appealing making it attractive i I think sometimes as Christians, like I know I fall into this trap of almost unconsciously feeling like if something is super enjoyable and I love doing it, then it must mm -hmm. not be beneficial or, you know, I mean, it's I kind of, well, if, if broccoli tasted good, then I'd eat it all the time. <laughs> I do like broccoli, but you know what I, I love mean? That you pull I, broccoli into it. <laughs> or broccoli or kale. I could say kale. I like both of those vegetables, but um, mm -hmm. I just remember one of my kids just the other day said, why is it that all the stuff that's not good for you tastes so good and all the stuff that uh -huh. tastes so bad? And yeah. I think we get into that mentality with our prayer life and with our spiritual life and our relationship with God, almost like, okay, um, like a, it's, it borders on stoicism, like the little meaning of stoicism where exactly. if it's not painful, it's not beneficial. And so I'm not going to self-flagellate or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to sitting in my comfy robe with my fuzzy slippers and my steaming cup of rich coffee and a blanket and music I love, I need to be kneeling on a hardwood floor in a cold right. room, you right. know, and Yes, we should be able to, if we find ourselves in that cold, austere room, we should be able to pray. But I think that especially when we're developing the habit of prayer, I think it makes so much sense to have it be nice, right? Like there's nothing that says that it has to feel bad. <laughs> no. And you know, and not to compare us to animals, but I'm thinking of dog training when mm -hmm. you initially, like, let's say, you're, you're training a dog to do something. Initially, you give them a treat every right. time they mm -hmm. do something right. But then at some point, you're able to just make the same motion without a treat and the dog yeah. will do it because they've learned yeah. it. And yeah. I think with prayer, it's even better because at first, maybe we make it, you know, maybe we're doing it for the coffee or maybe the coffee is mm -hmm. the trigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But once we really do develop that deeper relationship with God, it does become its own reward. I think as, yes. as we get into that habit, as we put the time in. So it's almost mm -hmm. like giving, you know, that treat is the incentive to get into the habit, which then becomes like a self-fulfilling. Exactly. So then reward. you could be in the cold austere room if that's where you find yourself and you could kneel and pray because you've developed that in cushier times, literally cushier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, I think there is a lot to that. And I think that, you know, looking back at myself as a younger Christian, I very much kind of fell into the stoicism to where like mm -hmm. I would wake up early in college and have some quiet time. And what I liked to do was to go up to the student lounge at like six in the morning. So of course there's no, no other college student on campus awake at that time. I had the whole lounge to myself and there was this beautiful uh, sunrise view. And there would be part of me that would even feel guilty like for enjoying the sunrise. Oh. And that's just, that's ridiculous. You know, like what a beautiful time to worship God and what a gift to be in a quiet lounge able to do that. And so I think that, yeah, we should be able to make prayer something that is enjoyable. And yes, I think we can say on a strictly theoretical level, prayer should be enjoyable, even if you're in like a refrigerator truck, you know, with a t-shirt on and nothing to sit on, right? Like we should still be able to pray. We should get so into prayer that we can ignore those external sensations, but that's just not how we're made. Like we are, we're spiritual beings, but we still have a physical body. And so seeing as how I'm going to go out on a limb here, Jamie, and assume that nobody listening at this exact minute is stuck in a t-shirt in a refrigerator truck. I'm just, I'm making that leap of faith. I'm with <laughs> I'm you. Say, okay. Okay. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, 
you know, let's, let's make it enjoyable to the extent that we can. And that's going to look different for different people. For some people, it's going to be like, I remember as a new mom um, or as a busy like mom of young kids, like just going in the bathroom for 20 minutes and taking a bath. Like that was the most luxurious part of the day. Cause it was like the only time I had truly alone time. That's great. Make that your, your relaxation, make that your prayer time, have that be what you crave. Or, you know, maybe you get to once a week, go take yourself to a day spa and have an entire day of pampering. And that's time that you spend to pray. Cool. If you can do that and you have the means, make that your prayer. So it can be, it doesn't have to look the same for everybody, but it's kind of in the state where you are, make it nice and comfortable for you. Yeah. And I think do that, is that called habit stacking where you have an yeah. existing mm -hmm. habit and you right. place prayer, you couple prayer to that habit. Yes. And the, the more enjoyable that initial habit is, the more likely yeah. you are to continue in your prayer. Exactly. Habit. I think that, you know, the morning cup of coffee, which is an important ritual for many people or tea, if you're a tea drinker, when you kind of couple that with your Bible study time, for example, all of a sudden those become two good habits now. So yeah, habit stacking means instead of trying to start a habit totally from scratch, you just couple that habit. So, you know, let's say you drop the kids off at school every morning at the same time, and then you go take yourself to the gym. You know, that would be an example of Sabbath hacking. Or I know when we've talked about prayer before, um, we talked about prayer reminders, you know, when you brush your teeth, you pray for your pastor, or when you drive past the hospital, you pray for the patients there. Those are other examples of just taking something that already is a habit and having that coupling, piggybacking another habit onto that. Yeah, no, I, that, that is so, I think that if I could take one practical piece of advice away from this book and this discussion, that would be probably the mm. biggest that would, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So there were a few, as I was listening to the book, I listened to the audio book and there were several other just really good practical insights and tips for acquiring and, and continuing on good habits in general that could apply to our prayer lives. And a few of those, mm -hmm. um, one of them was surrounding yourself with others who share the same goals and habits mm -hmm. that you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, if you're around people and nobody cares about prayer, nobody's interested in becoming more prayerful, um, it, it might make it more difficult. But if you have other people that are holding you accountable, that are asking you about your prayer life or sharing or tips, even just modeling, you know, like where it's the expectation, yeah. it, it does make such a huge difference you yeah. know the adage that you're kind of the the average of the five people you spend the most time with mm -hmm. I think is a good a good thing to keep in mind and they say that having in your close circle of friends for example like having several of your friends being overweight does put you at a higher risk of obesity you you become like the people that you surround yourself with. You become, we, we're all trying as social beings, we're all trying to fit into the social norm. Like that's, that's one of the definitions of being a herd animal, which I think, I think humans could be considered herd animals, maybe, um, okay. or at least communal, communal people. We were made, okay, let's, let's take a <laughs> evolution out of it. And let's say God created us to be in community. <laughs> that's probably less uh, <laughs> problematic. Yeah. So, we're designed to be in community. And so part of being in a community is acting like the people around you. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like I've noticed my husband has just in the past six to nine months gotten way more focused on his health and fitness and nutrition. And I'm encouraged by that through osmosis. It's not like there's this uh, direct, you know, Alana, have you walked your however many steps today like that's not really it it's just kind of we've become a family that is more active than we used to be and we eat a little healthier than we used to that's it just kind of happens and so yeah I think surrounding yourself you know we can't all especially right now in a pandemic we can't pick our <laughs> who we're who we're stuck in lockdown with that's right, right. But, but even for example like 
listening to this show about two women who are talking all the time about prayer, you know, that it becomes important to us. And hopefully that en encourages you listening to have it be important to you. So even I think that this can kind of extrapolate. I don't think that's exactly the right word, but there's a parallel even to like what we choose to consume for entertainment or mm -hmm. things like that. You know, um, for example, you know, I've talked about it before. Our family is watching Psych, which is like, it's a, it's a straight up PG show, but it also is clear that like there are couples who are living together before they're married and it's not made a big deal of, but it's, it's normalizing this behavior, you know, and the more you see that normalized in, the world around you in your social sphere in your entertainment the more that you just kind of accept it you know and i think that that is something that we can be conscious of yeah definitely i actually the other day we had watched a couple of movies with the kids i don't know if all the kids or just our oldest but there were i think it was just our oldest we had watched a couple of different movies and both of those movies were pg type movies pg mm -hmm. maybe 13 mm -hmm. but they had people living together and, mm -hmm. and it, it was not a big deal. And I just, I, I paused and I just said, Hey, I just have to say this <laughs> because you know, mm -hmm. this is not what God designed. This is not mm -hmm. how he intended. And, yeah. um, but it did make me think, wow, like just the, the subtle things, because I have my convictions in my mind, but for kids, especially mm -hmm. that are forming their, exactly whatever. But anyway, for mm -hmm. all of us, though, I have thought many times about what are the small choices that I make that I kind of think to myself, well, I already know where I stand on these issues. So I can mm -hmm. watch this or mm -hmm. listen to mm -hmm. this. But it does all of those things kind of add up to yeah. what you think about even just what you're thinking about during the day. If you're watching sure. mm -hmm. God glorifying things or listening to God glorifying yeah. things on online, you're going to be thinking about God. You're going to be thinking about how to become more like Jesus. And if you're listening to things that are just, you know, cheap entertainment and that's all, then, then maybe that's all you're going to be thinking about. So anyway, yeah, yeah. Not you know, that there's a, not a time are, for, for fun. And exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that we can kind of keep that in mind without having to get like judgmental or, or super rigid. Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. I think that that's true. I, I remember being a teen reading a Christian fiction novel and the main character was just having constant conversations with God. Like it was very similar to Fiddler on the Roof. Have you seen that? And you know, how is it? Yeah. I mean, God's just right there. He just talks out loud to him. And this character was like that too. And I found myself, even while I was reading this book, like I was just having a more conversational prayer life. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think the people that you spend time with and the entertainment you can consume can kind of normalize prayer or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, another, so another practical tip that he talks about is this idea of reframing. So when you have something that you want to achieve as a good habit, mm -hmm. A lot of times we look at it as, okay, I, I have to pray, you know, I need to pray more. I should be mm -hmm. praying more. Reframe that instead to something positive. So reframe that thought as I get to spend time with God now, or, mm -hmm. you know, I want to talk to God about this problem or, you know, just, um, so I don't know, taking, taking every thought captive in the sense of when you're, when you're thinking about the thing that you want to make a better habit, be mm -hmm. conscious of how you're thinking about it, because even just reframing it in your mind yeah. can cause you to desire to do that thing more and seek after it more. For sure. And the wording, like I, I actually called my husband out years ago, back when we were doing youth ministry together and he would always, and the Bible study by saying kind of in a sarcastic like voice, who wants to be the one who gets the privilege of closing in prayer? And he said it in kind of a way where everyone's like, yeah, nobody really wants to do this. Right. And like prayer, prayer is a privilege. And I mean, it, it was just kind, I mean, I, I'm not bad mouthing my husband. It was, you know, it, it was brought to my attention while he was doing this. Like you're teaching these kids that prayer kind of is a a have to at best and almost mm -hmm. a punishment at worst, you know, mm -hmm. and I think it is important how we talk about it, how we think about it. You know, prayer is an amazing privilege. I think we've talked about it before. Yeah, I know we talked about it before the story of Esther, like going into the king's throne room and mm -hmm. 
what an honor that is that we can just enter in to the throne room of God. We can enter into the Holy of Holies where, you know, pre-Jesus times, you would have been killed for having that audacity to approach God's throne. And now we can just show up. It's a privilege for sure. Yeah. And I think that's where learning about God, I mean, you know, it, prayer itself is not in a vacuum. We need to be mm -hmm. growing in our knowledge of who God is according to the Bible. Like we Bible study yeah. and prayer go hand in hand and you can mm -hmm. pray so much more powerfully and effectively by knowing who God is. Mm -hmm. But, but in terms of being able to reframe that, if we understand like the the holiness and just how amazing God mm -hmm. is, the privilege mm -hmm. of coming to his presence, I think yes. becomes more apparent. And you can Absolutely. and you can reframe not only that action of prayer, but you can reframe, you can reframe your frustrations about prayer. So like your distractions, instead of thinking, um, you know, I'm, I'm not good at prayer because yeah. I keep getting yeah. distracted. You can think mm -hmm. about distractions as opportunities to practice the discipline of prayer. And we've talked about yeah. this many times. Mm -hmm. And we're going to keep on talking about it because it is, it's so important. Distractions really aren't even the enemy. Like the enemy would be just giving up because you're distracted. Yeah. yeah. It's almost but, like, you know, with exercise, it's like getting mad at yourself for feeling sore afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's, that's kind of the point is to work through those, <laughs> you know. Right. That soreness is positive. That's actually yeah. evidence that you're growing yeah. and you're mm -hmm. getting stronger. Exactly. Um, and the same with time, like, oh, I just can't find time to pray. Mm -hmm. I wish I had more time mm -hmm. to pray. Reframe, reframe that as where can I find just one minute out of my day to pray? Or where can I find mm -hmm. five minutes out of my day to pray? Let me set a timer for that and become a forward thinker instead of a wallower. <laughs> for sure. You know, I think that I know you and I talked about it personally in, in the context of like time management and just mm -hmm. how you talk about time yeah. is so Ooh. significant. Like when you say the words, I don't have time for that, that can be, I mean, that can be similar to telling a kid, like you're terrible at math. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like it's very, um, there's always going to be time for your priority. Right. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I think that, yeah, thinking about how we talk about prayer, even in our inner thoughts and how we talk about time, you know, if you're saying consistently, like, I don't have time to pray, you're very much deluding yourself <laughs> because there, there always is going to be time. And I think that this pandemic is showing people for sure that maybe the problem isn't time. Maybe the problem is focus and perseverance and things like that. And, and just prioritization. And yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One more thing that we can reframe, one more negative thing that, that could be turned positive is if you have prayer overwhelm and you're thinking, um, there's just so much to pray for. My prayers aren't even going to make a dent because I find mm -hmm. that the news mm -hmm. does this for me when I just say, yeah. oh my goodness, there's so much. How do I even begin? And you can reframe that feeling and that thought as, Every prayer makes a difference. What one yeah. prayer can I pray right now to make a difference in someone's life or in my mm -hmm. life or whatever to bring God's kingdom here in one way? And, and it's just, I mean, it's taking captive every thought and making it yep. obedient to Christ is what this is doing. For sure. And, and keeping in mind the powerful influence of prayer. So yeah, if you're, if you're a hundred percent fatalistic, then really the only reason to pray is to be obedient to God, you know, and maybe to feel a little bit better personally. Like if, if you're the kind of Christian who believes that everything is already preordained to the extent that your prayers aren't going to impact anything, then the most you get out of prayer is God gives you a pat on the back. It says, good job. And you might feel a little bit better. And to me, that's not worth, <laughs> that's not worth all the energy that goes into really developing prayer as a like as a, a habit and a lifestyle. And so for me, it like my thoughts have to turn into my prayer is making a difference for eternity. Otherwise, what's the point? Mm -hmm. And going into your prayers with that sense of power is, is life changing and, you know, can change 
the the future. Now, yes, God is totally sovereign. And I know we've talked about this on other episodes. God is totally sovereign. You're never going to, um, you know, if, if you're, if Jamie's puppy is going to die, I'm so sorry I used your puppy. <laughs> I was trying to think of something that like wasn't a person. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to kill off Jamie in this hypothetical example. I don't want to kill off any of her family. Okay. Your goldfish. All right. If Jamie's goldfish is destined to die on Tuesday, then yes, there, I recognize that that's just how it's going to be. But I also recognize that we don't know God's plan until it's all the way done. And we have examples in scripture of, of God saying, this is what the outcome is going to be. People pray and the outcome changes. So yes, we, we work in tangent with God's sovereignty and I don't want to diminish God's sovereignty, but holy cow, I don't want to underemphasize the power of prayer to change world events, change history. Absolutely. I think that mm-hmm. is, that's a big just paradigm shift that we need if if we're going to move forward in in prayer is understanding that prayer makes a difference it's, yeah. not, it's not just going through the motions just because we yeah should. It, it makes it's not a just a have to yeah mm-hmm. yeah cool and i got one more one more thing that he talked about that i thought was really neat um he, I've heard this story before that there was some kind of study done where they had these photography students that mm-hmm. were, there was like a photography contest and one yeah. group of students was told to take one, they had one picture that they could mm-hmm. submit, or I'm sorry, they could, they could take one picture and then that picture had to be submitted. Right. And the other students <clears throat> were told that they could take as many pictures as they wanted and submit one of those. And I might be getting it slightly wrong, but the bottom line was the ones that took tons of pictures and not just the one picture were the right. ones that ended up with the best picture. Better quality. Yeah. Better quality. Yeah. I remember this one. Yeah. So like okay. one group, basically the, the incentive was submit, take as many photographs as you can. And that's kind of how you're going to, it wasn't quite like when, but basically the oh, goal it wasn't when. was like, submit as many pictures as you can. Like that's how we're going to grade you or whatever. But and it wasn't group, specifically, they have to be the best picture ever. Right. It was, yeah. Take a whole bunch of pictures. Take, take a lot, a lot of pictures. And that's how we're going to grade you. We're, ba- we're grading you based on your quantity of photographs. Okay. Yeah, and then the other sense. group, yeah, it was your only assignment is to take one perfect picture and submit it. And the group that took more pictures when it was judged by, you know, like judges who know what they're looking for, it was very clear that the higher quality pictures came from the group where it was just taking a whole bunch. And so, um, yeah, go ahead. That, that was the story. Now tell us your, your takeaway from that. (laughs) My analysis is, (laughs) (laughs) um, Well, he talked about quantity versus quality and, and the message is in forming habits, strive for doing and don't get hung up on planning or thinking about it because Mm -hmm. when you're in, in terms of praying, don't make sure you just get rid of this idea that you have to have the perfect place. You have to have the perfect time. You have to have the perfect amount of time in which to pray. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just do it. Like when you think about it, do it because what happens is, and this is with any habit. I find this with housekeeping, house cleaning. I spend sometimes more time thinking about the fact that my house needs to be clean Mm -hmm. than I do actually just getting to it and cleaning it. And then I come to the end of it and I think, wow, I sure do spend a whole lot of time doing housework with not a lot to show (laughs) for it. But the reality is I'm, I'm planning what I'm going to do next. I'm thinking, oh, this is so overwhelming. What am I going to do? I I need to deal with this. So with prayer, just pray, you know, and, and the more you pray, even if it's just for one minute at a time or Mm -hmm. five minutes at Mm -hmm. a time. Yeah. The more you practice it, the more of a routine and of of a discipline it will be. And so, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think just, and it doesn't have to get your reps in. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a perfect minute of prayer. Right. 
I think that gets, that's where a lot of us get hung up. Like everything needs to be perfect or Mm -hmm. else it doesn't really count as good prayer. And no, that's the distractions are going to come. They're going to be there. And then we just keep on praying. Yes. And I think that kind of goes back to this idea of, um, I totally lost my train of thought. Okay. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) it, it goes back to this idea of when you are getting distracted, that that is the work that that getting distracted is reframing the distraction. So looking at it as you know what, I'm practicing getting over distractions. I'm practicing getting distracted, bringing Mm -hmm. myself back in God's presence. And just that act of doing that is going to keep making you, I won't, I don't want to say better and better at prayer, but it, but, but it will make you more effective at praying it yeah, will and help you stay more focused endurance and and focus in prayer over the long yeah. haul yeah no I love that it's so encouraging and I love thinking about prayer more like a habit as opposed to just a gift because if you think about it as a gift then you either have it or you don't if you think about it as a habit then it's something that we all can grow in and you know increase our focus increase our efficiency all of that yeah I lied. I lied. There's one last one at the very bottom. I went to last one. The very, very last one. Really, the really (laughs) last one. But wait, there's more. (laughs) He calls it the two-minute rule. Mm -hmm. When you're starting a habit, begin with under a two-minute commitment, which I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. So don't set your timer for 10 minutes. Don't set it for 30 minutes. Set it for two minutes or even one minute. And just Mm -hmm. start with a small one minute a day or whatever it is that you're going to do. And that is going to give you a small victory and then you Mm -hmm. can build on that, but don't, you know, I know when my husband and I, a while back when we were in um, Nevada, we got a personal trainer and my, and Mm -hmm. we would go different days of the week. And so we would talk to each other and he was so frustrated with this trainer because he started us off slowly and Mm -hmm. he started Mm -hmm. us off at a place where, you know, we're both thinking we, we can handle this. I can do more. Yeah. Than this. What's the point? Yeah. Right. And so our tendency, I think for everything we do is to jump in and work out like crazy. If I hadn't had that trainer, I would yes. have hit the gym hard and yeah. then I would have been dead for two days. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think that's really, really important. I know another kind of way of looking at this is stop before you feel like stopping. Right. Like I, I heard someone recently yeah. who was trying to get into the habit of journaling and he told himself he was only going to write for three minutes and then he was going to force himself to stop. And so as opposed to same with a workout, right? Like we have a new kind of elliptical thing. That's pretty hard. Like at first my goal was just to get through a minute. Cause like it, it wasn't comfortable. It was, it was hard. And so if I had told myself, I'm going to do, you know, half an hour of this or it's not worth doing then, you know, I never would have gotten there. Like I'm up to about 10 minutes and really I don't plan on going more than 10 minutes because it's like, it's actually very, very hard to do. Yeah. And, you know, start with, you know, the two minutes I think is, is great. And sometimes I think for some people that two minutes could be like, not actually two minutes of praying, but two minutes getting your prayer stuff ready. Like, so your two minutes might mean sitting in that chair, opening up your Bible and, just saying, asking God to show you what he wants you to do. Like if you make that the habit, that's a lot easier than saying, I'm going to pray for half an hour or something. So like taking back to the gym example, for a lot of people trying to get into a routine of going to the gym, the habit is actually packing your gym bag and taking it out to the car Mm -hmm. as opposed to working out for an hour at the gym, right? So just figuring out what's the smallest step that's going to get you closer to your goal is I think really, really helpful to look at it that way. Oh yeah. That, yeah. What is the habit before the habit? What is the thing yeah, that the breaks habit. the ice? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Like a great example for us is like, it takes us several minutes to kind of get our recording areas ready. And so if we like, we both like meeting here, but if for some reason we didn't, <laughs> it could be like, instead of just, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, record for an hour and it's going to be so exhausting. It's going to be, I'm going to get my stuff set up, you know, the camera where it needs to be, the mic where it needs to be, Mm -hmm. the lighting, how it needs to be. I'm going to, I'm going to get ready to show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yay. Well, it's so fun to get back to like talking about these specific prayer things. Um, so again, if people want more, the book Atomic Habits is super useful. And we also have episode 99, way back before all the COVID conversations, way back before lockdown. Mm-hmm. And we talked about um, some of these habit form forming guidelines in even more detail as it relates to our prayer life. So speaking of creating good habits, you can get our prayer prayer journaling. Oh yeah, that's down now. (laughs) We have restructured and we have taken down quite a bit of our things. So um, we are still, the one thing that we still do have up is the, um, what's our, what's our journal, scripture Uh, journal? Prayingchristianwomen.com slash journal. It's the Praying mm-hmm. Christian Women Scripture Journal, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's 30 days of scripture prayer. It's really neat if I, I can say that. Do you say so yourself? <laughs> well, I was going to do that, but you did a lot of that. And I well, think I just kind of was tidying a up at the end. No, yeah. I think that one was pretty 50 Was it? Okay. But anyway, yeah. It, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, this is a good time to let you guys know, like a lot of the the um like courses and videos that we had done like those were all gone so if you weren't on our mailing list and you didn't grab those when they were out they're gone for various behind the scenes reasons um so yeah that's a good incentive to stay tuned to what might be coming next and and also a reminder that if you're listening to really really old episodes some of the links to some of our resources are no longer functioning because of behind the scene reasons (laughs) we'll do a special behind the scenes oh yeah see jamie and i got into this big fist fight the other day and you're like fine we're just gonna take all these things down it was like a simon and garfunkel thing you know we just it really butt, was yeah but had no it was but now we're back like that. this nothing is our like reunion that. tour nothing like that yeah. no it was honestly yeah. yeah it was a it was too much um the behind the scenes is it was costing too much to have the hosting for all of those. So, yeah, but we do have plans for 2020. We're excited to move forward and we're just looking forward to getting to connect with you and yes, continue what we're doing. Absolutely. All right. So let's close with our blessing and benediction today and all days. May you be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. May he clothe you in his robes of salvation and adorn you with garments of praise May you put on today a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. May you be covered by the full armor of God so that whatever this day may bring, you'll be able to hold your ground. And over all these virtues, may you put on love, which holds them all together in perfect unity. And our benediction is from Romans 15, 5, and 6. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Jesus Christ, that together you may live Uh, you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.